Hello, everybody, and welcome to another PMP end-of-month review. Well, what is the PMP? Why, that's the Painters Motivating Painters, our Facebook group uh, dedicated to the miniature art hobby and helping you take your next step regardless of where you're at, whether you're just starting out or whether you're a master. It doesn't matter. If you want to be part of a positive uh, community that's focused on all of us working together to create amazing uh, miniatures, this is the place for you. So what do we do here? Well, once a month we get together and there's an event. You can see it on the screen right now. This is the January event. You can find it under the events tab on the PMP page. And we invite our users to submit one uh, of their projects that they completed during the month. And one and only one, by the way, you can't submit multiple. Uh, and offer some advice as to what they were going for or some discussion as to what they were going for and uh, discuss what they were looking for feedback on. So I'm gonna spend the next however much time it takes uh, giving a little review uh, and trying to answer the questions that people have here as to uh, you know where they can take their own next step on their hobby journey. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you. And you can look right down below in the description and once you know it, there's a link to join up. As a note, if you ask to join, you must answer all of the questions, all of them. So just not some of them, all of them. There are only three questions. If you don't answer all of them, you don't get approved. That is 100%, I don't care. There is no excuses or, or anything. If you, if you want in, you answer all three. It's that simple. At any rate, uh, this is gonna be a good time. Uh, as a brief note, before we really get into it and get going, there will be a video linked down below, uh, the beginning of which has me going through some actual miniatures and showing you deeper examples of what I'm going to talk about. So, for example, a lot of people this month had questions about things like NMM or achieving higher contrast on flat surfaces. I talk about a lot of that stuff like higher contrast and NMM and bone and things like that in this video in extreme detail. I did that so I don't have to repeat myself month after month after month, but also because I like doing this, but there are a lot of submissions and I only have so much time in the day. So I need to make sure I'm moving through them in the most efficient way possible. So I'm not doing this until next month when it's time to do it again. But at any rate, let's uh, get into it. So remember links down below if you wanna join uh, and thank you in advance to everybody who submitted a lot of great stuff this month. Uh, this is going to be the non-metallic month, I'll tell you in advance. Like, everybody's trying non-metallic metal. And so I'm going to go deep at the beginning, and then after a while, I'm just going to say, go back and see what I said before. Okay. Uh, and or the reference video. So let's get into it. Uh, we begin with a, uh, a piece from Daniel Rodriguez. Um, and basically, he says he needs help on, on the face and precisely more the mouth. And confirmation or advice is correct or correction on lighting, the sword, and the wings. So let's look at the face. So the model is probably a bit goofy. I'll just kind of say that. Like, she has kind of a strange face. Um, the model's probably letting you down some a little bit. That being said, what you need is more variation in the face. Like, you have her doing the crying blood thing, and that's making up for it. But if we pull that away, her face is lacking color here. And up in here on her forehead, like you can see how much red there is in my forehead around here, in her cheeks, things like that. You've got a little bit of red here, but it's rather abrupt and the shadow is deep. You want to soften that. You want to bring more in here under her mouth. Like it, you know, painting a face is about nuanced application of very thin filters. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's not a bad face. I would say don't generally paint eyebrows unless they're modeled on there, even on a figure this big. Like, she's pretty big. This is like a 54 mil figure, I think, or something. Like, that's or the size of her. So, I mean, that's the Dark Oath and Chieftain in the background. So you can see she's quite large. And it looks like the eyebrows might be modeled onto her. But I would still be very careful with those. You want them to be kind of light. They They can be overwhelming. Yeah, it looks like they're definitely modeled on there. And again, I think it's mostly the sculpt that's probably letting you down. Now, on the sword, what I'll say is it's fine. Um, I One thing you want to avoid is having, like, the problem is you have it moving straight across. That doesn't work. Different planes of light are going to catch different aspects of light, right? Like my ring, as I move it around, if I change its angle, reflects differently. It's the same for the sword. So there are three planes on this sword, like on one side facing. 
And so you generally want to have dark against light. So like if this is your dark spot, which is fine, I actually believe this middle plane the most, then like in general, we would want to put the dark bit here at the end of the sword or something and have like a lighter bit here to here, you know, like gray trending into white right here. And then this shouldn't be dark if this is dark. So like, you know, something like down here should be dark and then this should all be light or something like that. You have to play around with it. When it comes to swords with weird angles like this, it's not really about figuring out how the light actually works. It's just about trying to figure out what looks good, to be completely honest. Um, because who knows? Like, the lighting can be all over the place. There's no exact way that it's going to be reflecting it between all the... If something's really that high where it's like this chrome metal reflection, um, it's there's there's no, you know, there's no exact one way to do it. Um, as far as the rest of the stuff goes, she is big, and I'm not sure I love the bone on the wings. The The wings themselves are fine. They could be smoothed out a little bit as far as the highlighting goes. But these, like, bone striations, they're very flat and very brown and very kind of not interesting. I feel like we need something more there. When you go up larger in scale, you need to, like, really add additional detail. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like that's the part of it that's letting you down. I like your armor work. You know, there's probably needs to be more color in general in the skin, more reds, more purples, that kind of thing. Uh, but the uh, but the the wings, sort of the flatness of this skeletal structure is really letting you down there. But overall, cool submission. All right, next up, uh, Jared with a big tank. And he says basically he feels like it's lacking the pop and he's trying to get the dirt to separate from the weathering. Yeah, so... I mean, I don't honestly know that you're lacking too much pop. It feels pretty realistic. Like, if you were trying to paint a realistic tank, like with under a realistic lighting scenario, I think this is fine. Um, now, one way you can make it pop is when you get to areas of rust and stuff like that, you can add in a little more orange. But, you know, on the whole, I feel like you're actually probably in the right place here. Like, this is a, a nice, well-done tank. Um, one thing, though, when you do have these, like, decals on here, make sure that you have the dirt and grime and stuff and streaking and chips going over them. Like, there should be a couple of chips out of these or scratches through them where the blue can be seen. Like, the amount of dirt and streaking on this thing tells me that these would be scratched and have a, and be a lot and, like, have streaks going over the top of them. So, like, right here where I can see, like, worn away paint and stuff uh, on these dark spots, there should be scratches in this. If, it, if we're this worn, then this should not be whole still. Um, if you wanted to go and really push the contrast up, you certainly could. It's, a different, it's sort of a question of whether you're going for like a historical scale modeling type or whether you're going for more like a game type model. If it's a game type model, yeah, I would just push it up more and do things like pop the edges, like catch the edges with a bright light blue before you weather it. That's kind of the key. It's the same on both of these, by the way. I mean, this is clearly a much more historically based model. Um, but that's kind of the thought there. The other thing on trying to separate rust or something like that from dust is you just want to make sure they're different colors like that is to say make the dirt it's driving through you know a darker brown or a deeper mud or something like that and then make the rust a different brown and have orange rust in it and you know just things like that um i would say but but overall i don't think you have a lack of pop i think this is a really nice job so yeah i think it's i think you're good so great job all right, next up, Bob uh, bringing us uh, uh, his custodes. Uh, so it says, first time doing proper edge highlighting, painting power weapons using and painting custodes. Uh, being super simple and trying not to distract from the models. Okay, so let's take a look. I mean, these guys are an experiment in gold. So, Bob, what I would say is we need to still push the highlights up more. Like, he still feels too flat. The shadows aren't deep enough and the highlights aren't high enough. That's the basic challenge here. So, I mean, contrast on the gold is still what we need. Because we need to, when, when you have a miniature that's like all one thing, we have to define and separate the elements. So I need like deeper, darker colors and lines, especially in between things like the Aquila and the feathers and elements like that. You have some of it down here. I need more of it like up here on the shoulder and things like that. So careful application of deep uh, sepia, chestnut, purple inks, stuff like that. And then pushing more to the silver in the highlights actually on it would be my advice. Now, as to their little power halberd, let's flip around to that. Um, I mean, I think it's fine. You probably want to actually, like, one of the big problems is the, the light's kind of in an interesting place. 
light is just more interesting if it's not just one fade that goes from dark to light. Like if this was light here and here, and then it went up to medium and down to darkest, it would just like that become more visually interesting. Because the more transitions like that you have, the more visually compelling a model is. Final thing I would say is the purple's rather flat. Um, you probably want to pop that up some and make that a little more interesting. It's it's a very flat tone of purple. But overall, cool. I mean, like, it depends on what you're going for here. If you're going for, like, tabletop standard or something like that for an army, you've nailed it. So it's no issue there at all. You're you're beyond that. All right, Greg Lee. Uh, Greg, Greg Lee. Sure, why not? Uh, basically has a question about, uh, not convinced at all that the sword and the scabbards non-metallic is right. Same with the armor shadows and highlights. Yeah, this is a tricky one because you, it's sort of a very, again, it's a very odd figure, um, in an odd pose with like odd angles. So it's, it's just going to be tough to highlight. The part that I'm sold the most on, honestly, is something like the sword. Um, it needs to be smoother and we need to have like more control. Like it's very rough on the blending right now. So you need to smooth that out. But I'm pretty convinced about the highlights and shadows there. The rest of the model, to be honest, doesn't feel like it's in non-metallic. It just feels like it's in this sort of orangey tone. Um, and I think that's mainly because we don't pop highlights up high enough. Uh, contrast in non-metallic metal is all about going very, very, very high in contrast, right? And it's just other than like you look at the sword, you look at this gold on the hilt, and I'm like, yep, okay, I've got some very dark there. I've got some very light there. We're running the gamut. I look at these big wing sections. They don't have that, right? And again, when it comes to big flat spaces like this, you, these big kind of flat planes, making them non-metallic is, is tough because they are going to do a lot more than just have one plane of light, honestly, at that point. Um, they're going to get really complicated and be kind of weird to reflect. Um, go look at like Ares when Land did it, or you know, just the various example of the Ares miniature that's out there, and you'll see what those big flat planes do. They they have lots of light reflections moving vertically in them. The one that convinces me the most is the helmet. I actually really like the helmet. Um, this light line sells to me. The shadow next to it, I, I like that a lot. I like the blue kick from the the chest. That works, like because here you went up high enough, right? Um, the rest of them, I don't have that layer of that level of, of contrast, and that's what's not selling me. I like the tone. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's bad. I think it's fine. It's just a sort of, you know, bronzy colored dude. Um, I just don't think he's hitting the NMM, but I think he still looks good. So, you know, gems look really great. Those sell. Uh, and, and the OSL is nice and a soft, gentle touch. So I actually like that quite a bit. Okay. Uh, Dwight bringing us some painted fire slayers. Uh, looking for, uh, advice on how to paint splotchy, muddy feet. Yeah, sure. So the first thing I'll say is with the skin, be careful. We just kind of with like washes that get, have these hard lines between them. It's just something I noticed some softer tones transitioning there. Like you're four, you, you go from like two again, let's just set this up. Whenever I reference a number, one is your highest highlight. Two is the next tone down. Three is your mid tone. Four is your first shadow. Five is your deepest shadow. That's, a, that's an indelicate and simplistic way of looking at lighting, but I'm going to talk about it that way because it's the easiest way for us to just have a universal frame of reference, okay? So you're going straight from like two to five on the edge there. Way too high of a jump. Now, muddy feet, super inch, super easy. I mean, you just literally take like some thin black ink or paint and just kind of stipple at their feet. And then you take pigment, brown pigment, and you kind of stipple over it and above that. And that's it. There's nothing more to it. And by the way, having muddy feet, your wife was very correct because uh, anybody, especially barefoot people, especially in dirty areas, should always have some of the element they're walking in on their feet. My boots aren't super clean and I'm not a warrior running across battlefields all day, right? I walk on pavement and sit in my house and my boots still aren't clean. So uh, what's one of the things that'll snap me out of a fig super fast when I'm judging a painting competition is if I notice that the feet have no connection to the world and there's no dirt or dust or anything like that on there. Um, so good instinct. Yeah, that's that's how you do it. Pretty simple. Hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Samuel. Uh, first attempt at freehand and uh, yeah, so basically that. Spent a lot of time on color selection trying to add 
uh, serial to make the model look interesting and stand out from a normal trooper. Okay. So let's take a look. I mean, I think this guy's quite good, by the way. I, I had I looked at most of these in advance. So a quick note on the lightning on a power sword like this. Um, I don't love the orange and I don't love the the single gradient going up and down. It's the problem is the orange doesn't work compositionally. Your I know you did this orange as well, but this is so much more desaturated and so much more minimal. Like at a distance, all you can see is this freaking sword. Right? So you want to be careful with that. Like if that sword was just in blue, it would be this piece would snap into focus. So that's a minor note. Um, you know, your your golds and the non-metallics all sell. And honestly, looking at the freehand, I think it's great. Um, I think your your stuff up here is good. I don't know what it thinks it's finding there. That's funny. It thinks it found a human face. Um, these little, like, chevrons look good. The Aquila looks great. I, yeah, I mean, I think this is all wonderful, man, especially across the surface. Um, yeah. I, I really honestly don't see much of an issue with it. It's crisp. It's clean. It sells. I like it. I think it's great. So, like, judged on the freehand, I think you did a wonderful job. Well done. Okay. Uh, so, Connor. Uh, basically looking for advice on the color choice, lighting placement, etc. on the non-metallic metal. So, honestly, I think you're... It's decent. We need to think non-metallic isn't just about a single gradient. Okay. So, like, go watch, look up Cujo's video. If I, I'll, I'll write myself a note here and I'll put it in the description. Because this is the only video worth referencing. Um, I have to make myself a note. Okay. So, non-metallic isn't a single gradient. There's reflected light. And so you see it most on, on spherical objects, okay? But uh, it's not just there. So this shield would also be in the same position. So you have your light catch here. It would move to darkness. It should move back to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, okay, is how we should be going here. And same on the, the globe of the, <coughs> excuse me, of the knee, where... <coughs> We start at one, go around, and then I should have some of that light underneath there. Excuse me. So, at any rate, um, that's just a, a thing to think about. Now, as far as your actual light placement goes, if we if we discount that element, uh, I think you're in a pretty good place. You want to watch out. You're using a little too much pure white. I would go to something like an ivory or pale sand or ice yellow, you know, something like that. Just a little too stark in the contrast area. Um, also, you want to make sure that you're kind of uh, capturing uh, a little more of the near one. So we kind of jump straight from one to three. What's missing here are the high twos. Like you don't have enough not quite white, but very bright gold highlights. So a little bit more of that mixed in and shrinking that white volume down uh, is really what's going to sell it. Um, but overall, it's good. I mean, this is your first attempt at it, you said, and I, I, you know, I think this looks very nice. Um, so I think you're definitely going down a great road. It's just a matter of pushing it farther. As a side note, the thing that sells the least is the scale mail because there, it doesn't go bright enough. Again, the contrast isn't high enough on there. So uh, other final thought is on the lightning. Whenever you're putting pure white over a thing like you did with this lightning, it needs to be, first of all, I wouldn't use pure white. I'd use something gray or near it first. And then if you want to do the white, you can do it over top of it because I can still see the blue through some of this. So never, ever, ever just try to go straight to pure white ever in any circumstance. Always do some intermediate color first. All right. Uh, so Tim Royce, uh, again, first attempt at NMM. Well, what can you work on? Uh would tinting potentially have been a technique to enhance this mini and give it more realistic light? Uh, I want to enter some competitions this year. What could we do? Sure. More NMM. Okay. It's it's going to be a thing this month, folks. Settle in. Uh, yeah, the thing that sells here is the steel. The other metal doesn't work. I don't know what the other metal is supposed to be. I don't know if that's just the effect you were going for. Like you wanted it to be that brown and it's not supposed to be sort of this brown orange and it's not supposed to be non-metallic. If that's the case, I'm fine with it. It's not non-metallic. 
I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks perfectly fine, but it's not non-metallic. Uh, the steel, yes, filtering would have been a great way to go. Namely, filtering in a color between your two and your four. Right? It's it's very stark and gray right now. Having like a blue tone in there or something like that would have would have done a lot. Blue tone, brown tone, red tone, anything like that. Sure. Uh, I think the axe sells well. I enjoy that. I think that looks really nice. Uh, I like that you have this very bright highlight here and resisted the urge to go to the same down here. You could pop this up a little more, but it's good. You, we were controlled. See previous statement about reflected lighting. That's going to be in effect again. Um, we don't have the reflected lighting on. And if you're looking at competition, then the answer is a lot more time. What I mean by that is like these edge lines on things need to be thinner. The blends need to be smoother. It's if you're going to paint for yourself for an army, you can do a thing once. If you're going to paint for competition, you need to repeat a thing three times every time you do it. So like it just it needs to and you're constantly getting thinner and thinner and thinner every time to just really make sure you're nailing it and that the glazes are smooth and that every transition is perfect and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, yeah, I think that's I think you have the right ideas. Uh, I'd love if you watch this, Tim, to know what, what were you going for with the, this darker color that isn't the steel. I think the gray steel works, but again, yes, a filter color will do absolute wonders in there. All right, Jamie Foster. Uh, basically, again, looking for some advice for competition, just general feedback. Sure. So the major issue here is we don't have enough tonal variation in the miniature. Uh, and I mean that in the skin especially human skin is fascinating it's interesting it's very this is an old man old people skin is generally some of the most fun stuff to paint there's lots of coloration on there his skin is very wrinkly and very hangy so he should have reds and purples and you know all sorts of interesting things going on you can go all sorts of crazy like he could have sort of you know veins showing he could have liver spot type of things he could you know just all freckles all over the place, just that level. And if you, if you're wanting to, to paint something like this for competition, that's the kind of place you want to take it because you want to, it's not just about painting. Well, the competition, everybody at a competition paints well, right? You have to do something to stand apart and make the judge be interested in what they discovered when they get close to your piece. The thing that works the best here for me is his robe that I really like your tonal variation on that is fantastic it's a really interesting color choice. It balances well. It's muted and desaturated. That's excellent. You could pop it up even a little more by with a little more texture, but I like where it's at. It's good. The skin is where I need to see more work. Yeah, more reds, more tones, more purples, more detail. Like this area of his neck is basically the same color as his, the front of his chest. I, I need more than that. Right. Uh, so that's kind of my thought there. Hair looks good. I do like the red in the cheeks. I think that's fine. Uh, but yeah, more variation. That would be my biggest answer, especially when it comes to flesh tones. All right. Uh, Kenny, uh, painting for a couple years now. He's looking for tabletop quality. Uh, thank you, by the way, everybody who's including the black and whites. That's great. Um, if you're including those, I want you to look at them first. And say, do you have enough contrast? Because many of these I've seen in here, I look at them and it's pretty prima facie obvious that there's not enough. So if you're taking the picture, you should see it too. Uh, but let's take a look at this guy. So fa he says facially, fa you know, but just facially looking at, um, be great if he could get some thoughts, advice around skin tones and brightening up his palette. I think your palette's plenty bright. You, you don't need to brighten your palette anymore. Yeah, I mean, your faces are just a matter of like I've described more. It's, it's working in subtle tones. I will tell you the honest answer. Go look at human faces like in makeup and of differing kinds. Just like go go look at the real world. Barring that, go spend time on like putty and paint and look how they do faces. So, you know, reference the real world first and then the um and then the thing next. Uh the art next. But the I think that that we do need a little more uh color in the skin basically. Like when we look at this one, it's very flat. There's no Red, there's no tones in her face. Human beings have a lot of red, a lot of purples, a lot of blues and things like that in their in their face. Yellows. Like the traditional human face is, especially, well, for males, is yellow, red, blue. And for women is is yellow, red, red. And then 
yellow again. Okay. Um, so, like, women have a more tea red area on their face. Um, the So that's the kind of thing you want to be thinking about when you're thinking about color tones. And, and then on the whole, I would say, you know, my challenge for you would be, I understand you want to be at tabletop. I have no issue with that. I dig that. Know who you are. Paint to what makes you happy. I'm, I'm down with that 100%. Uh, I would say if you're looking for a challenge, like what can be your next steps, it's it's tonal variation. It's just popping out things like that purple more and getting and like things like this yellow is very flat. So having different tones in there, I think, is where you'd want to go. Like when we look at the, the picture, this is all basically the same color, all of that. So that would kind of be my challenge for you. And then hopefully that helps you with the faces as well. All right. Uh, Jack Williams, uh, painter for tabletop. Again, cool. And but he tried some tattoos. Love it. That's the best way to go. How can you improve the tattoos for next time? Sure, it's glazes of the actual skin tone over top. So this is a big dead zombie giant. He didn't get these tattoos yesterday, but that's what it looks like because they're all really bright, really stark against the skin, right? Uh, when you tattoos fade over time, I would suspect that a tattoo on a dead raised female zombie giant are especially worn and weathered since his skin has gone to rot so you need glazes of the original tone over the top if that makes sense take that greenish skin tone that you've got and give me some glazes of that mix a little bit of your actual skin tone with the black when you're doing it too but still do the glaze over top that's basically what you're missing there do that and it'll snap into place in a big way all right, Zab, uh, with his first bust, and I'm glad to hear the that I was in your head because with bust, the answer is spend as much time as you think you possibly can before you go insane and then spend twice as much time as that, okay? So uh, this is good. I like a lot of what's going on here. Texture on the cloth, good. Uh, the bone, I think, looks really nice. Uh, the gold coins and stuff that he wears, his sort of armor plates, I think those look good. Really nice, rich gold that separates them. The feathers are a little flat. They're too much of this variation. Like, it goes from, from very bright to very dark. And there's no vertical visual confusion here. What I'd love to see is some of these edges trace some red down occasionally. To have this not be so completely even. Like, I understand there's an environmental shadow. But is it that perfect? Right? So, that kind of thing. Uh, see earlier comment about reflected light, like there should be a small reflected light down here. Uh, and then the edges on this silver, if they're, if it's this shiny and reflective, the edges need to pop out more because they would be catching light. Um, but yeah, overall, this is really great stuff, man. I, I like this bust a lot. I think this is a cool bust. This like skeletal Roman legionnaire. It's a really neat bust. Uh, yeah, I dig this. So that, that would, those would be my main pieces of advice for you, but overall great work. Juan Francisco Gonzalez Hidalgo, the coolest name in the PMP, uh, bringing us an experiment, again, looking for feedback on the non-metallic metal. Um, this is good because you have the reflected shadows. So for people that I was, like, if you want to see what I was talking about earlier, let's look at this left arm of this guy. See how we have a main light here and a secondary light here. Exactly what I'm talking about. Perfect. Nailed it. Great. Um, we can do a little more of that in some places, but you know, it's not like every shadow needs to have reflected lights, but especially it's usually spheres and cylinders that are especially prone to this, right? Like other flat surfaces, triangular surfaces don't as much, but check out the Cujo video down below if you want. I mean, it's, it is the best video ever on this sort of thing. He explains it in such a succinct and perfect way with visual aids. Um, it's something I've never made a video about because I just don't know how I would top what he did. <laughs> When, when the perfect thing's already been done, you just you let the master go. So uh, that's kind of my thought there. I think this is great, honestly, Juan. Uh, I have about zero issues with this. Now, if you want to know how would I take it to the next level, the answer is pop colors and secondary lighting. So the reflections here are placed. They're great. The problem is it's all purple to white. There's no ambient environment in it. So having a... Pop color in between your two and three where there's a little bit of blue reflected light or something like that. A subtle filter glaze over that 
that would be the next level stuff. Um, go look at David Soper's work if you want to see a good example. He like look at his gut rot spume is what I generally reference people to because it's one of the greatest examples of sort of pop color I've ever seen. Uh, but that's that would be my main piece of feedback for you. But overall, this is great stuff, man. I love them. Uh, okay, uh, Fat Joe. Hey, I like the name. Uh, first serious attempt at uh, heavy weathering on space marine armor. Just looking to get some criticism. Sure. Thinner, sharper paint. Some of these lines are correct. I like this one down here. I like this. They're varied in size. Good. But it needs to be thinner and more intense paint. Because like some of this black doesn't look as dark as it should. And that's because it didn't go on and cover deep enough. Same with some of the reflections. They should probably be a little more blue-white instead of this white, but I'm okay with it. But thinner is really the answer. Uh, you also want to avoid vertical lines like this because they really jar people out of it. You have to then pick a side the light is coming from, and it's not It's not the same. Because, And here's how I know. like You, you, you pick the wrong side. Uh, because down here on this knee, you told me it's from here. There's several places where you're highlighting the other side. But up here on the shoulder, it's coming from here. So, like, if the light was this direction, then this side should technically be catching it. Right? So, just avoid, like, straight lines where it's vertical vis-a-vis -vis the figure. So, that way you can more easily kind of lay out a consistent thing. But other than that, like, thinner up the lines. Now, if you can't get your paint thin enough because you don't have the white ink or the flow, the flow improver or a sharp enough brush or the control or whatever... That's okay. That's no big deal. What you then need to do is just come back in with the blue. You set your brush right there, and you just push against that white ever so carefully. Ever so carefully. Just baby step. And then that'll that'll let you then thin that line out. It's actually one of the great cheats. One of the great cheats of drawing super hyper thin lines is just not drawing thin lines. It's just painting over the other part of the line. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Hope that helps. But overall, like I like your placement. It's good. Feet are weathered heavily. Things like elbows, like the joints that he'd be knocking against, top of him's weathered less. Yeah, I like all that. I feel like you'd, you know, compositional wise, that's all good. We just need some more saturated paint that really, like, kind of actually catches and makes what it is. Shrink down some of these scratches a, a little bit and some of the lines, and you're good to go. Okay, next up, uh, Nako. Uh, honest opinion as his first attempt at what you'd call a competition piece, and he'd like to know if that's standard. Um, yeah, man, I think this absolutely is. So I, I looked at this beforehand. And this, this piece is pretty great. Uh, we'll go to this one because it's a nice close-up of kind of all around. Uh, the non-metal on the reflection is great. We've got nice secondary reflections there. I, I dig that. Uh, the eyes are probably your biggest challenge. I'm not sure what's going on there. They feel like too much of the miniature is the eye. I, like, I don't feel like his eyes are actually that big on the mini. So I don't know. But either way the the nature of them being raised up off the bottom like you can get your pupils raised up off the bottom of your so there's iris underneath but not that much not that perfectly round like if you had a thin thing of white because he's kind of leaning his head down i'd be okay with it but that's too much that was the thing that popped out to me the most also the gold non-metallic up here doesn't reflect enough it's the like this is this on the shoulder pad is fantastic. Same with like his axe hilt roundy things. But then when you 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 nailed those, and then when you came to the flat surface of the the squared off, um, the squared off uh, axe, we didn't take it as high on the contrast. The only other thing that pops out to me is you want to make sure we smooth some of our blends down a little. Like from here they look good, but when I get up to here, uh, this is still rough. So just be careful with stuff like that. Make sure the glazes are together and in place. But you're definitely in the right area for a good competition piece here. Um, I think this is a really nice piece. The axe, I think, is standout. I think it looks wonderful. Skin has a lot of really nice tones in it. Absolutely dig the, the intense reds and purples. So that's looking good. Paint is cleanly applied. Reflections are in good places. So yeah, overall, I think this is this is really great work, man. Okay, uh, Kartik, uh, first time submitting. Uh, basically, he wants to, he's doing this Death Watch color scheme, and he wants to add some more blue for the highlights. Feedback on the color scheme, edge highlights, freehand chapter marks. Okay, so 
the blue doesn't look like edge highlights. It's too thick and it's too much of a jump instantaneously. Like we go way too high. So I would direct you to Darren Latham has a great video on doing Space Marines with edge highlighting in blue. Um, I did a video recently on painting black. I would direct you to that video. Um, those are the kind of things you want to look at because we're just we're jumping like way too far here and suddenly and there's just no transition. The colors are also all far too saturated. Like, I mean, this is this right here shows what I mean. Like, this is just instant black to gray. There's no tonal variation across the marine. And it just whoosh, jumps straight to this line. I have a video on edge highlighting. I would go watch that again. I have multiple videos on edge highlighting, actually. Um, so go watch those. It'll show you how to get those sharp, thin edges and how, if you don't, how to correct them. But when you're going for this kind of thing, because you want there to be blue, it needs to be very subtle. And it needs to build up in very careful very careful layers up to it. Uh, it's it's far too stark here and too thick. Uh, it just looks like he literally has blue, something blue glowing around the edge of it. Um, when we're when we're and and the other thing that's really being dangerous here, and it's probably the chapter is we have like intense red, intense red, intense red, intense green, intense blue, too many colors. Like, that's too many primary colors that are all highly saturated. The, that color combination does not work well. Like, it's a television color. Um, so something there needs to be desaturated or removed. And honestly, my answer here would be the, the blue. If I had to keep the red because the color scheme. The thing you don't need is the blue. So you can still use blue as a filter, but it needs to be way more weaker and way more desaturated. Way more like gray blue. Then you'll just have basically the red, green, and the black, and we'll have much less of a problem. So check out those videos, and I hope that helps. Uh, James Denny bringing us uh, his first non-GW miniature. Uh, yeah, this guy. This is the Wraith. It's a, it's a good mini. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he looks really good. Texturing looks nice. Uh, I think I might want to zoom in on him here a little. We're kind of far away. Oh. Is it going to let me? Nope. It's not going to let me. It's just making that bigger. <laughs> just making the little window bigger. Uh, at any rate, so I'd love a I'd love a close up. Like I'm going to be one of those people who's leaning into my camera now. Yeah, I think a little more visual interest on like the sword. This guy's in a really big scale. So I think my biggest challenge for you would be things like more detail, especially in some of the weathering. A little more pitting, color. Work in just some different interests. Like that sword is super rusted. Give me some some sort of oxidized color corrosion. I know it's not appropriate, but who cares? It's just visual interest on the sword, right? Like, this is where kind of art needs to win over over realism because it's a giant floating wraith creature, right? So we left some part of reality behind a little while ago. Um, and the way that you did work it in on the armor, where I see these sorts of, you know, more green tones there. Um, but yeah, a little more color in the shadows, the deep shadows of the armor, I think, would help on the weathering. Pushing into like a blue or a green tone. Especially good with Undead as it feels kind of otherworldly. Um, the big cloak could probably use some more something. It's good texture. I like that a lot. But it's still very samey. Uh, maybe a little more color transition. Maybe a little dirt and things like that around the bottom just to show it. Because I mean he's just dragging it along the ground like a ghost boy. So I think something like that's probably what I would I would look at. But it's a really good mini. I mean, you did a great job with it. And I like the color. Very desaturated. Feels very dead. It's good stuff. All right, Matthew. Uh, looking for some advice on the overall miniature. Uh, white is very difficult to apply smoothly. So, yes, correct. The answer here is more tonal variation, Matt. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, that is to say, like, it's the hardest thing in painting. But the answer is simple. So go watch the reference video. That's number one. But again, more more tones, more color in the skin, reds, purples, things like that. The answer to why it's hard to paint white, if you really want to paint something white, go look at my How to Paint Smooth White video. That'll help you out. But also just don't paint this much white. Like there's too much white here. Um, white is a visually uninteresting color. It's very boring. It doesn't communicate anything to the viewer. And it's generally uninteresting to look at. So you want to make sure that if you're doing something like this, that you have more grays and those grays should have a color and the white should have a tone. In other words, it should be a slightly blue white. And most of the figure, most of the, at least 50% of your white space should be not white. 
should be gray blue or gray green or whatever like it doesn't matter you can use any color white purple looks really nice if you want like a satin effect but just something like that that's basically my my feedback for you there okay all right hope that helps matt Okay, uh, Tomas, uh, first entry for a local painting competition. Basically, just looking for more help on what he can do and to push the model farther and tips for large flat surfaces. So, sure, I mean, with large flat surfaces, I would direct you to, like, my sort of any of the how to paint base coats fast video because that's going to help you out. But, I mean, the answer here is, yes, more smooth tonal variation across the Mini. Um, in general, the Mini's kind of flat. So, let's go back to this black and white this is all the same this is all the same this is all the same right all the individual pieces are the same tone throughout black and white makes this super clear like the sword is the same i can tell the distinction between the pieces but there's just almost no variation across the individual uh elements of the piece here and the biggest offender is probably the Space Marine armor itself. Like, this needs more shadow tones and more sort of pop and things like that to it. The chipping and weathering is fine. I don't have any issue with that. It's a bit evenly distributed. You want to be very wary of that. Like, this guy has a lot of the same size, roughly, chips on him. So when you're doing this kind of thing, uh, you want to avoid the, like, 30 chips of all tiny size like he was in a sleet storm you know or like he was in a hail storm he got hit by tiny rocks of about roughly the same size you know you want them to be more organic you want some that are a lot smaller you want a couple that are larger that kind of thing but go watch like the how to paint fast base coats video i've got a couple of that but that's the answer this should be much deeper up here should be introducing some like if we're gonna go you went warm here so let's go cold at the base so bring me down some purple some blue purple in there same into these shadows to bring me into a blue purple in the shadow and then take me to a, a yellow you know high highlight at the high color right but just more tonal variation throughout same with the metals I talk a lot about you can go watch the reference video um true metallics need that same pop as non-metallics so we need a more careful application of inks and colors to push it farther right now the metal's very flat and we need to take that up so that would be my advice for you Hope that helps, and, and good luck. I mean, it's a very good figure, uh, so I think you absolutely... And there's a new... I think this is like Mephiston, right? This is his old version. So now there's a new version of him, I guess. So there you go. It's something to try on. I don't know for sure it's him, because I don't know 40K special characters very well. But hopefully it's him. All right, Daniel. Uh, hello, everyone. Happy New Year. First post here. Uh, Ogre, basically, he's happy with the leathers, but not the skin or the metals. Yeah, sure. Um, see previous statements I've made on skin. More contrast, more tonal variation. I need reds, I need purples, brown tones, stuff like that. Like, we really want to introduce a lot more colors in here. Um, also a note, just like general paint cleanliness is a challenge here. Uh, what I mean by that is like this line of his arm. You can see where the painting stuff is kind of not as clean as it could be. Uh, other final note is separate your elements. Like here we have a leather glove and then leather straps over top. These should be separate in some way. So I can tell they're two different materials. Um, the, and then before you apply the metals, this guy needs a good coat of matte varnish. We have a lot of paint here. That's quite glossy. And I'm not talking about the metallics. I just mean the normal paint. And that really just throws off the effect, right? You want to make sure that your paints are, are much more leaning toward the matte side they can be a little bit satin, but these are far too shiny, okay? So my best advice is a lot more tonal variation on the skin. If you go watch the reference video I linked, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, uh, and then map that out, and hopefully that'll help you out there. Uh, cool figure, though. I dig it. I, don't, I have no idea what this is from. It's, good. it's a really neat ogre dude. Okay, Caspian bringing us the latest from his army. Uh, so I've, I've given lots of past commentary to Caspian. No, I think you're pretty fine on the color balance here. The green is obviously very intense. You may want to think when you've got big pieces like this where they're way up on giant rocks, 
about bringing a little bit of that green up top. Uh, so like maybe this guy has two little glowing green eyes that are the same green as this. Maybe the moon has a gr big glowing green eye that's the same color as this. Just having a little of that also placed in full brightness up top could help balance out the overall composition. So that would be my thought. But these dudes are cool. The effect sells. Good glow. All right, Ash. Uh, Morlock from Chimera. Took me a while. Use this to get better. Uh, only been painting a year and a half, but don't go easy on you. Okay. As you wish. So first things first, uh, when you're asking questions about non-metallic metal, take a photo where you actually can see most of the non-metallic metal in it. Like, I don't have a picture here where I can see the sword, and I can't really see anything that's going on here with the non-metallic except for the side of this bracer and this knee pad. So, there you go. Picture's also a little overexposed and bright, so we want to kind of bring that in a little bit. Like, it feels like the light doesn't have a cover on it. So, watch out for that. Now, what do we need to do here? Uh, the non-metallic on the sword vaguely looks like it has the right amount of shading in it. It's hard to tell. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's really hard. Also, bring me in on the model more. Like, this is a lot of wasted space here in this frame, if, if I'm going to judge it. I don't need all this or all this. Bring me in tighter so I can see it. Um, so, feedback. Uh, much more tonal variation on the skin. Like, a lot more. See everything I've said previously. Muscle structure needs reds, needs blues, needs lots of stuff like that. Go watch the video where I painted, painted ruddy dwarf skin if you want to see a good example of that. Because um, that's kind of what this guy should look. He's a barbarian. He's out there. He's in the snow. Whatever. Um, he's out in nature. If you want him to be, feel cold, that's fine. You don't have to be, keep him super ruddy. But, like, he still needs... It, it, when people are in cold, their, their skin gets much more pink. So, that's, like, right away. Right there you go. Uh, the leather and the elements need more separation. His hair just looks blue. I don't know what we were going for. Maybe you were going for blue hair. But it's very close to the steel color. And you want to avoid that kind of thing. He... If you... You know, if you're going for black, we just need to glaze in a lot more black and bring that down. Tattoo, glaze over the top, same thing as I told for the tattoos previously. With a leather strap across the belt, make sure that's if his skin's going to be very bright and light, make the belt very deep and dark, so we have a good separation of dark to light elements there. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I would recommend. But uh, there you go. I hope that helps, Ash. Cool piece overall. All right, Scott Gibson. Uh... Doesn't ask for any specific feedback, so I'll just kind of give some quick stuff. As always, when you're posting, please ask for specific feedback. It's a big help. The biggest thing I noticed, Scott, is we want to make sure we're focusing on our paint cleanliness here. We've got some places where the, the paint isn't as clean. Make sure our lines are nice and separated, things like that. I would also say the same thing I said previously. Like, this black is very glossy. So is the red. You know, all these, like, a lot of these elements are really glossy. So, like, before I did the metals, I would mat this guy out and then go back in with the metals. Same thing I talked about before with the metals. They need a little more tonal variation, a little more uh, actual shape of the color to them. Same with the black. It's rather flat. So, if you're kind of going for, like, a tabletop-ish, super cool. But I would definitely kill all the shine out of that black. It's just it's very distracting when everything's super glossy like that. Uh, so, make that flat and place some highlights in there, and I think you're in the right place uh yeah that that would be my main piece of feedback good dirty boots i like it well done okay chad ashton uh starting night haunt and this is the color scheme decided to go with concerns the classic how to shade and highlight black uh it's just a troop should you do more etc like what's the what's tabletop okay so could this be tabletop yes fine absolutely here are the things I would do, though, if I was going to stick with this as tabletop. One is I would definitely make sure the chainmail is much more popped out and metallic and rusted or something. Like, make it more visually interesting. It just, it's the same color as this. Boring. Like, we did this with an airbrush real quick. You have an airbrush, so we can pop up the top a little more. And here's how I would do it, keeping in mind you're trying to paint, you know, you're going to paint 100 ghosts. I would take a soft makeup brush. I would get a light gray color or something like that with a little bit of other hue in it. Let's call it a gray blue. That'll contrast very nicely against the red. Take a soft makeup brush. Get a little bit of that paint. I would lightly dry brush the top of him. Lightly. Okay? 
Then I would take just enough to catch all these nice ridges and edges and highlights. Again, I'm thinking, like, how do I make this go as fast as possible? I do this before I did any of the chain mail. This would be one of my first steps. Then I would take something like a Payne's Gray, and I would do a very thin glaze of it in my airbrush, and I would just glaze over the top of all that one or two times to snap that together. Super quick process. Won't take long at all. It will make these guys pop a lot lot more and separate those elements so that would be my best advice for you if you want to like pop it up and still stay in a you know uh i hey i have to paint 120 ghosts or whatever and i don't feel like losing my sanity so that would be my best advice for you there all right uh Laylee, uh with a very big uh diorama uh looking for uh basically just kind of you know yeah, what's the diorama? I'll focus more on composition with this because I think that's what you're going for. Uh, my biggest issue with the composition of the piece is everybody's very close together. Like, I like the general verticality of it, but there is a lot of people in a small space here. Like, let's let's go back to this picture because it's going to really sell what I'm talking about. I can't see the dead guy on the floor here, right? And I can't see this guy behind this main dude here. So, like, I don't, this guy just looks like he's floating on a sword, and I can't see what's holding him in the air. So, compositions, dioramas are meant to be viewed. So, you want to think about your viewing angles, and they have to have these logical sort of viewing angles in addition to a story. So, compositionally, generally, you've got a couple different structures you can go with, the most common being either like a bifurcated or a triangular composition or something like that. If you want to read a full article on this, the Illustrated Figure Mentor Issue 1 has a fantastic article from Chris Surrey about that. And it's he's a master of composition. So that's the first thing I'd say. Like, you wanted this piece, this figure to be central? That's fine. Then just get rid of this other guy back here. Like, we're too busy for what we're trying to do, for the amount of space we have. If we want to tell this much of a story, then I need more horizontal or something. So this guy can be, because I should be able to look from the front and see all the figures at play, basically. All right. Um, so that's kind of the first thing that I noticed that jumped out at me. Now, as far as like a lot of the painting and stuff goes, it's fine. It's very bright, saturated colors. I would desaturate a lot of that. Like the blue on a lot of these cultists are like super blue. The green is super green. The red is super red. Like where you were playing in a lot of just the, the rainbow color space here. I would bring a lot of these way down, especially on the cultists, because they're not the figure of this piece. As you said, the, the thing you care about here is like the thing you, you, you want, you're wanting to tell a story about isn't the chaos cultists, right? It's, it's the two main guys. It's the guy up top and Cypher. And so if that's the focus point of our story, they should have the brightest, most intense colors. That's a shorthand trick to get people to pay attention. But, like, when I look at the bottom, Cypher's the most boring figure because he has the least color on him. These guys' bright blue jeans are just, like, drawing all of my attention to it. I can't see anything else, right? If these guys were in very muted colors, very – they should be. They're chaos cultists who live in, like, an underhive or something, right? They're, they should be dirty, and they shouldn't be in, like, popping, popping colors. So take them down spread the figures apart or reduce them so we're only so we're telling a concise story that i can see what's happening here and uh think a lot about your viewing angles of like when i'm looking from this this or this in other words like 30 degrees dead on or 30 degrees to the other side so 30 left center or 30 right what am i seeing and am i still seeing the narrative okay so that would be my my main feedback for you I've got a video on, on diorama composition as well, so you may want to give that a watch. That will help. All right, so let's keep going. Scottster, uh, watching a lot of Darren Latham and Angel Geraldo's videos, decided to follow Darren's advice by getting better by painting Space Marines. Cool. So basically he was looking for some feedback on what he can improve technique-wise, uh, all that kind of stuff. Sure, so let's take a look. Got some good photos here. So I think the biggest thing is we move too much into the orange spectrum kind of in general. If you watch Darren do the same color scheme, he then brings it back together with reds with some glazing at the end. Some very thin red filters over this would really help a lot to bring it in line. I think that's the biggest 
challenge that we have here. Um, I think your your color tones look nice. Space Marines are a good thing to paint. They're very fun. Watch them rotate. Ooh, it's amazing. You know, your contrast is nice over the red. That's not going to go away with a slight red glaze. So I think that's good. The Aquila on his chest and that kind of stuff, I think those are a bit harsh as far as, like, these blue things go. Again, see earlier comments about reflected lighting, but when we're doing this kind of non-metallic, we want this to be a little bit smoother, like you're, you're jumping up a whole lot here from 5 to 1 real fast, and there's not quite the distance I'd want to see in between it. So that's kind of my main thoughts there. Hope that helps. But overall, it's cool. And you're right there. I mean, painting Primaris is a darn good way to practice. Some thin red glazes will kind of snap everything back into place. Okay. Uh, Matthew Young. Uh, you're not a day late. You have until the end of the month. It's just the event. We, you can't set a Facebook event for more than two weeks. <laughs> so you're good. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at Grom Burdell here. Um, some of the things I said earlier about skin tone apply both to the Goblin and to Grom Burdell. He doesn't have that much skin, but his arm and like his face. We need more red tones, more purple tones. Uh, the part that is the strangest to me is like the beard being all that gray white when it's clearly metal. So I'm not sure about that. I like the gold. I think that looks real nice. Um, we could smooth it out some. It's, it's a little rough in sort of the blends. Uh, and I think that's true for a lot of the piece. Like my main piece of feedback for you would actually be just more applications of glazing to kind of smooth everything out. But overall, I think it's a good piece. It's just that I'm not sure the, the beard works. If you were, that feels like it should probably be just in a non-metallic metal gray to kind of match it up. Uh, but then that and the skin, I think those are your, your main challenges for you there. But overall, he's a cool piece. It was a, it was a cool holiday fig this year. It's always neat that they do those every year. All right, Mark Tan. Uh, and yes, he says he knows the sword is too large. And boy, are you right. Like, I love oversized weapons, but this is pushing it even by my standards. Um, yeah, sure. So how do we draw attention to the face? Okay, so as it is right now, the face is very boring. Like, let's let's just all together cover up the sword. And the answer is we want a little more color there. You want You can use a pop color there a little more, so... A nice thing. Give me a zoom in on the face. This is about the closest we've got, so we'll use this. Um, this is brighter, which is good, and it's tough on a, on a mini like this that's very desaturated. But, you know, one of your answers could be have this skull that's above him pop out a little more. Use a little more red. Your eyes will tend to follow red. So you could use a little more intense red in both his eyes and the gem and, like, something on the skull, like a big bright war paint marking on the skull or something could could help. Uh, composition wise, yeah, I mean, avoid this. One of the things that often happens when you, you, you didn't have to tell me this was kit bashed. Uh, but my advice is avoid this thing where like, I get it. He's a jump pack troop. So he's kind of like in the air, but avoid two legs kind of being at the same height and standing sideways on a rock like this, where you can, you'd be better literally just moving him over the center. If he was in the center of this and just kind of standing on the rock, he would feel a lot better. Uh, that's like the way he's, is he landing? Is he jumping off? Either way, it wouldn't make sense for his one foot to be kind of out here it, in, in this position. If his leg was like way up in sort of a Captain Morgan pose, if it was like completely bent back. So he was clearly doing like the, the Captain Marvel leap, like go look at the Captain Marvel fig from Marvel crisis protocol. Cause she's, she's one foot leaping off something, but her other leg is like completely bent back. Right, his foot is down like he's wanting to step on something, and there's nothing there. Like you expect him to just go whoop the next second when he lands, right? Um, so that's kind of we could also draw attention to the face by darkening around the face. So have more deep shadows with this gold right here, which the gold in general needs a lot more contrast, like a lot more tonal variation, and uh, and then that by by darkening the area around it you'll help show off the pop light of the face. So there you go. I hope that helps, Mark. Okay, Ian, uh, big step for him. He'd love to get some feedback. Really tried to mess with stippling in a big way. Um, tried for some higher contrast and louder combos. Very new to non-metallic metal. Okay. So one of my... I, I like this piece. I do. Um, I think the color choices are really cool here. Um, obviously you've used like this bright purple magenta and, and this bright green. So you knew I was going to be a fan. 
Um, my biggest problem is honestly the red. It That saturated orange red doesn't work there, especially not with such a large color. That should probably be something else like a magenta would work, but an orange red will not. Um, it's just too much of a too large area that's the same color. In addition, the bright green on the bone being the same as the sword is odd. Like, is her sword made of the same stuff as her bone structure? I generally don't mind. I'm pretty guilty of hiding colors like that around minis in the same places as well. So, But you want to avoid being something so radically different. Like, I'll often make the hair color the same as, like, those wing striations. Yeah, sure, it's the same demon. They're made of the same stuff. But, like, the weapon is clearly a distinct piece. If it was going to be me, I would honestly make these horns the same. I mean, this is bone. And you told me her bone is green. And then you fell back on the same thing and you just made the bone here bone color and the bone here bone color. Like you were going the right direction and then you pulled back and you fell back on habits of making things the same color. So I would make the horns green and this piece green, the turn this magenta, and I would have the sword just be like a very subtle blue kind of power type of sword thing and i think you'd be good to go that would that would honestly help a lot um like a very faded blue gray not as much as the hilt but just like so a little more intense but you know like a traditional power sword and it would kind of fade against these really intense greens and stuff like that so that's kind of my main piece of advice for you there um when you're color balancing like this you want to make sure you're working in these tones and the red just the orange red just it doesn't work But overall, I think you did a good job. Like texture cells, skin tone cells, bright color cells. It's great. All that hit where it should. Ed, all right, bringing us a big keeper of secrets. Uh, oh, you don't need to sell me on this one, my friend. Uh, one of my, obviously one of my favorite models of all time. Many of the decade. This is really nice. Paint is really clean. She's bright. Uh, the biggest thing we need to do is, again, on the skin, uh, just more tonal variation across the mini. Snap a picture of this, turn it black and white. You'll see you. it's very flat as far as the, the various colors go. So, you know, she is a demon. She has this demonic skin. Work in some reds, some stuff like that in her skin to make her feel a little bit more alive, especially in your four, your three, four, five area. So up under her arm, up toward the top. Where you're already shadowing, we need a color there as well. Uh, the purple looks good. The blue, like this, this sort of powder blue, uh, I don't have a problem with. I think that's fine. Uh, I honestly think that part is the best part. I think it works really well. Uh, the purple could use maybe a few still darker areas where we're pushing down. Uh, the sword is what I said earlier. See comments at the beginning of this video about the sword. But when you have a three-plane sword, which is what this is, the shadows don't fall like that. They don't like it's not a block and a block and a block. Each one needs to vary, and you need to be alternating light and dark to kind of vary across the surface but she looks nice the gold looks good claws look good i mean like everything's smooth so i have no issue with any of that but that would be my best advice for you all right call uh bringing us uh, a big old catacros uh new colors like the fluorescent green for the gems and the blade so just kind of looking for general feedback um my biggest advice is i i like a fluorescent green this blade is way too much of a good thing way too much like let's do an experiment let your eyes relax don't focus on anything in particular just kind of let your eyes go go relaxed where you're not focusing on anything what's the only color you see it's this and this is the focus of the piece not this right we want to be looking at catacros in all his glory so my honest answer is this needs to be way desaturated down most of this blade should be normal and if you want to use this fluorescent green it should be like the edge color or just at a tip or your your one on a non-metallic highlight blend or something like that right you've got it scattered around which is cool like and in most of the other places on this on this diorama on this fig you're using it in a very reserved way uh that's how i like it this is too much of a good thing it's the main thing that jumps out at me so there you go hope that helps Tristan Gray uh, bringing us his first unit uh, for, for his Cities of Sigmar army. Uh, basically, tried a few first and excited for some feedback. Realistic flames, dark skin tones, and building up bases. Sure. So let's talk about all that. Um, so the skin tones are good. They're darker. They still need more color. 
um, when you're working in darker skin tones, deep reds, magentas, purples, um, you can still use some glazes of an orange tone in there to kind of show where the light's reflecting. You use that between like your two and your three, uh, that kind of thing. I, I dig the heck out of this this army you're making, by the way. Obviously, these are converted from um, from Clan Escher Girls in Necromunda, which you don't have to sell me on that. I'm, I'm all in for that, buddy. Uh, so that would be my advice on the skin tone. Uh, on the blue, some of those highlights feel really, really stark. So you want to smooth those out with some glazes. And then on the bases, yeah, I like the chunky bases and building up. Some of them, you end up with some kind of weird positioning. So like the one girl in the back right as we're looking at it, um, this girl right here, she seems a little cattywampus um, given the angle of approach there. But uh, but other than that, I think they're good. I think we just want to see more with the basing. They're on like this rocky ground, but it's all very samey colored and there's nothing else going on. Like, are there plants in this place? Are there skulls? Are there detritus? Is there other kinds of rocks? Are there little, you know, little anythings around? Like all the stuff that would be scattered in nature, little tiny scrubs and and uh, that kind of thing. So just make sure you, you take it all the way home. Uh, as to the fire, like what she's got here in her hand, uh, it's good. I'd, I'd take that orange a little farther. Like I'd bring it down just slightly. Little more subtle orange, little more subtle whole red. So not any real red. No Ferrari red, no real red. We keep that out of our fires. That's just, no, 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 no. We don't use that. But like a little more, we, we jump from like yellow to black in a really short space. We need to pull down that orange more and then pull down that, that red black a little more. So that's my thoughts there, Tristan. All right, Andy Walker uh, brings us the bus, trying out some non-metallic, looking for feedback on that. As I said, this is non-metallic month. Um, I love this bus. It's creepy as all get out. It's pretty fantastic. Um, yeah, I think as far as the non-metallic goes, it sells the best for me here across the chest because the light line is placed right in the middle and it reflects well. The chin also looks nice where it's catching it. Where I have the biggest problem is like here on the back with these pieces. These don't look as convincing because again the highlights are pushed to the edges so see the previous sort of discussion about that um that would be my main sort of thought for you is that you want to make sure you're we're kind of taking all those highlights up unless you don't want that stuff to be metal if the like shoulders and these back pieces aren't really intended to be metal then that's fine and if this is really all that's meant to be steel then i think it sells so it's just a question of what your your intention is uh and and obviously that's harder for me to just read without knowing. Um, but if we're going to do that, if you're going to have this be a separate material, then I would introduce a slightly different color tone to show me it's a different material. Because right now they're both blue, gray, black kind of color palettes. And I don't, it just looks like this one didn't get highlighted as much. Uh, so that, that would be my thought there for you, Andy. But uh, yeah, cool bust, man. Dig it. Uh, Tim, uh, his demon troll thing. How can you improve the metal? Uh, should you bring more colors into the mini? Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, first of all, do we need more colors? No, I think we're just fine on that. What we do need is more tonal variation across the skin. Um, that's what you're lacking. Like his main skin, especially in a lot of places, it's good on the hands, but it needs to be smoothed out. Like you're jumping from dark blue to stark white. I highlighting blue is difficult go back and watch the i recently published a video on exploring colors blue go watch that and you'll see how you can use glazes to bring those tones into line but still have a lot of variation uh, now as to the metal um it's got a lot of variation in it but it's no longer smooth like we went we went too stark with these transitions there still needs to be some metal in there it just looks like literally it's burnt like it's scarred i still need to see gold tones so go and watch some of the like non-metallic gold videos i did uh most useful here you might want to look at something like um the uh, the most recent video i did on exploring non-metallic colors like revisiting non-metallic colors in true metallic metals um that deals on like a copperish gold color and you'll see how i'm using the matte paints in there um finally you, like there's just too much of especially the back piece that just isn't gold Right. And so that's that's where it's not selling. I think the helmet works the best of the face mask or whatever it is, works the best of all of it. So there you go.
Hope that helps, Tim. Okay, Howard Kyle. Uh, last advice was to push the shadow on the highlights. So how do we do this time? Uh, okay, so we have a one and a two and a five. We have no three, four here, right? Like you brought your highlights up, but notice how quickly we go from like white to brown, white to brown. We've got to smooth out those transitions. This one really shows it, right? So yes, you have a one and a five. You've got to your contrast points. Now we've got to bring it back together. So I need subtle glazes of that gray going into that brown to smooth that transition out and bring it back into coherency. Okay? So that's my best advice for you there. Hope that helps, Howard. Lee Ascroft. Uh, really happy with how this turned out. I was going to chip all the edges, but I love the color so much. The yellow lights need more work. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an orky vehicle. I would chip it, man. It's going to look better with some damage. Um, yeah, I mean, on it, I think it's good. It's very bright. It feels very airbrushed. Uh, the things like the, um, doing the weathering over top and chipping things would honestly help it. I think the color's fine. The panel modulation's fine. It's just very kind of boring because it's a, like, I don't mean that in any rude way. I just mean like it is a big vehicle that basically is all one color. And you didn't give me a lot of separated elements there. Um, this is probably too much yellow on something that feels like it should just be steel. Like, I'd love to see more just basic steel and stuff in there to kind of flatten out some of those colors. Uh, again, too much of a good thing. But yeah, chips, scratches, rust, streaks, especially on orky vehicles, especially on something that's just basically a big round flat traffic cone. It'll help a lot to break that up. It's not going to ruin the color. It will make the color look better. Because right now the problem is the color ends up being too much of a good thing. It's just all that color. Whereas if there's lots of breakups to it and variation, the stuff that's there will pop more against those chips and scratches and things like that. So there you go, Lee. I hope that helps. All right. Chris Larson, uh, this chapter master of his Space Wolf successors. Uh you know, did his edge highlighting. Um, and so basically, you know, what, what does and doesn't work. Sure. So I had taken a look at this guy before and the answer is yes, it's, it's tonal variation. So like I'm cool with the edge highlights, but the armor itself is so big and basically flat. A lot of the elements here are the same color. Um, like so much of this guy is that same thing. And the yellow is just like a big flat yellow cape, right? I need more variation in those tones. The yellow, um, you know, needs more subtle rust tones and colors like that in it. Light rust and rust are great ways to shade uh, yellow. Again, so just more more something there to break that up. Same with the armor itself. The edge highlights look good. They're nice and, and thin. In most cases, they look real, real good. But they're very subtle. And when it comes to something like that, I need more. I need more separation of panels. Darker lines between... You know, probably a few brighter edges even. Like, you know, it's a very uniform edge highlight. The stuff that's up here should have brighter edges than the stuff that's down here at his feet. You can't see where my hands are right now, but as we go down, right? Um, and then just finally on the face, like if you're going to put white on the eyes, like actually put in pupils, his face needs the most work. Um, because like, again, see previous comments about like color in the face and having stuff near his hair, especially here. Um, down by his face and having more color around his eyes and having defined pupils. That alone would do a huge amount of work here because right now he just, it's very stark to have these like white eyeballs and no shade around it. Like look how dark my eyes are showing right now. Part of that's because I'm lit from above, but so is he, right? Look at how dark the ring around my eyes are, right? That's the kind of thing you're trying to, you, you need to capture there. That's what will make the eyes and the face sell. So I hope that helps, Chris. All right. Uh, Jan, basically, uh, basically he was, you know, asked to paint it in the heavy metal scheme. Looking for some general feedback and tips. Sure. Uh, so my honest answer here is going to be pretty straightforward. More. So this is a big piece. It's a centerpiece. I need more. The green is very flat. I need more of those edges picked out. You can do that with a dry brush. 
and then lots of glazes over the top. That will you can go very far with that. Um, so more of that variation and all the rough texture on this guy. The bones don't have enough striation and transition in there. You can go watch the the video below. That will tell you a lot about. I cover like bone transition and stuff like that in the video, so you can go there. Um, the orc himself is probably the best part, but again, uh, more on his face. Like let's let's go to this one where you can see him a little clearer. Um, I like the pink addition to the nose and the lips. Solid there. I'd love to see some even deeper shadows and some brighter highlights. We need to, especially the highlights, I need to pop up this area of his face a little more. Uh, and as to the yellow armor, some chips, some scratches, things like you've got these big rivets. These would have, these would be scratched. These would look like metal colors. You know, these would have rust lines around them, shadows, stuff like that. So just more variation in that kind of space. He feels a little flat right now. And so that tonal variation will, will is, is what you need to make him pop out a little more especially if you want to get into sort of weathering and damage and stuff like that that will really help so there you go i hope that helps but it's a cool scheme i mean you, you definitely executed on the box art style very well and he certainly captures those colors all right kyle uh critique away first at this style and it's been a while since i posted okay sure again help me out by saying what you're looking for but okay Simplest answer is smoothness. I need a lot more smoothness. Your transitions here are really, really, really stark. I need more glazes and soft lines to bring that together. Like this is way too stark. Okay. So just kind of across the mini, that would be, that's the number one thing that jumps out at me. Um, beyond that, like composition wise, it's fine. When it comes to plasma, you want a little bit deeper colors and you want to pop up the plasma a little more. Um, the metal is also flat and doesn't have the, the tonal variation we need. So some soft applications of our inks and stuff like that will really help in selling that effect. So, But the main thing I would want to ask you to work on is just some, some subtle, more transparent glazes and layers to help bring those, those highlights together. That's my best advice, Kyle. Hope that helps. And welcome back. We're glad to have you. Uh, here, Ryan brings us uh, – or make, yeah, pronounce Michael – Okay, I did it right. Great. Okay. Um, focused on practicing uh, glazing correctly, highlighting the face and ears, looking for feedback on those. Uh, but anything is appreciated. Yeah, so I think this is good. I think we need a little more color into his general, like, general face. Like his nose, the top of his lip, the brow ridges. These need more higher highlights and we need more subtle tones down here. Like, I need to create those shadow colors of those reds or something like that where he's got tones under his face. So the answer is sadly more glazing, um, but working in those tones, easing the transition between the pink around his eyes into the green of his face, basically paint him like an orc, right? Where those colors need to be subtle and softly transitioned. Same with the, the inner part of his ears. Those feel like those should go into a slightly deeper color be glazing in some deeper purples and stuff like that, and that'll really help. But, I mean, he's super cute. Uh, so, I mean, I think overall you you captured his likeness quite well. Um, but those would be my main pieces of advice for you. Hey, it even knows that that's a face. Whose name is it? Why, it's Baby Yoda, of course. Everybody knows that. You can see what I'm talking about here. Like, see how the eyes just look white? That, I mean, the contrast photo tells you everything you need, right? Like... We need more subtle shadows here. Need more subtle shadows here. This needs to smooth more. This needs higher highlight here, 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 here. Right? There you go. Okay. Uh, Johnny, uh, first proper model of the year. Uh, just like some general insight into what you think works and what could use improvement. Uh, yeah, sure. Big old Mortarian. Okay. So what works, what doesn't? Well, the wings don't work. I don't mind the feathered wings. I think those are fine. But they don't work because they're too big, flat, and the same color. Like this guy is a riot of different colors going on. And then I get to the wings and it's just like gray. The least interesting of colors and so much of it. Um, you know, I need tones in there. So I, I don't mind the feathered wings as opposed to like the bug wings he normally has. I think that's actually a cool take. Um, but I need to see more just variation in those wings in general. You can keep them in gray if you want to. I'd rather see more of a hue to them, but if they're going to stay in gray, then I would want to see them 
branch out a lot more, like subtle shadows here going to higher highlights on the edge. Um, same with the purple tone and the cloth, by the way. Um, let's get over to, to the main shot. There you go. This will be nice. The purple tone and the cloth is, again, too flat. Needs more of the same. The rusting and the weathering, I think, looks fine. He's very dirty. I like the white color armor, but I think you've actually sort of cracked that nut pretty well. Uh, I feel like that's on the right page. Uh, the purple at the end of the gun isn't working. I assume you're going for like a heat, like a heated metal thing. It's too much sudden purple. Uh, the heavy rust looks really nice. Your weathering's on point. I would still separate these elements a little more. A lot of this stuff really comes together. That happens a lot when you do heavy weathering. We still need to have the elements separated strongly. So go and look at like Richard Gray's model. It's He's heavily weathered it, but it, the elements are still very distinct. Where I'm really seeing that is things like these, you know, these little balls and stuff like that that he carries around versus him. Like, this is all kind of the same color, not the purple robe. But all of this is just kind of the same color. And I'd love to see that have more differences in oxidation and weathering. Like, use the way different things weather to separate the differences in the piece. The final note is the little blood slicks down here in the base don't really work because they're... So eyes are naturally drawn to red, okay? So when we look here, like, just again, let your eyes relax. Don't focus on anything. What do you see? I see two bright spots of red. We didn't need the little blood spatter down there. It can just be melty, goopy dudes. And then we don't have it. If you're going to have that kind of red, then it needs to be up here around his face. Your eye, human eyes track the color red. It's just a thing. So the, when you use a sudden, bright, intense red, you're going to snap people's eyes to that location. So that's my main thoughts for you. All right. Uh, Jewels with uh, Tor Garadon. Uh, Tor, I'll tell you right now, we got to get, or sorry, Jewel, <laughs> that's the guy. I'm talking like I'm not talking to him. Very hard for me to say, I need a better picture. Like, if we're going to do something like this, like, please set up a place to take the picture. Give me non-desaturated light. It's overexposed. I can't give feedback when I'm dealing with a picture like this. Sorry. Um, like, I just, I need it closer. I need even lighting. Stuff like that. From here, the best thing I can say is it probably looks like it doesn't have enough tonal variation in the yellow. But that's hard to tell because that could be overexposure. Right? Right. So give me a good photo and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, Matt O'Brien. Uh, looking for some feedback on the Avatar Rasputina from Malifaux, particularly the snow ice effects. First time doing them and the skin. Is that something I'm trying to prove on at the moment? Okay. So, uh, yeah. The, so on the, everything needs more. <laughs> That's the basic answer. Um, I have a video on painting ice. I would go look at that. The short answer is it doesn't really look like ice. Uh, it's too just one color. Like we can see it here in the contrast photo, right? And please keep including these people. This is amazing. I mean, it, it tells the whole story. Ice needs this layered effect to it. And so you generally want to have like a deep blue to show, kind of show the depth in what would be normal shadows. And it should come up to these thin streaking white lines at the edge like, and it's lots of layers of paint stacked over top of each other to create the illusion of depth, right? And then finally, these very thin, white, dusty lines of the cracks in the ice. So I need just basically more transition. She herself, I'm okay with the hair being like super fake red. If that's what you're aiming for, that's fine enough. Um, but she herself needs to be more uh, pale and skin because she's obviously cold. She's in the ice. I mean, that's kind of the thing that's going on there. But more just kind of controlled variation of her skin so that she sets apart in some way from the mini. I mean, she already does because she's very warm versus the very cold ice column. Fine. I have no issue with that. But like more pale highlights to kind of bring her out and pop her. She's not really drawing my attention in a way she would if the skin was more brightly highlighted. Although the red does do a good job of getting her there. So like the fake red is actually a very good trick. As I just mentioned, red draws the eye of having it get in there. So that's kind of my basic thought. So hopefully that idea of like stacked ice matters. You can watch the video that I did, but the key is just making those layers sit on top where you like have dark blue in the shades, 
coming up to this light blue. Basically, we need to get into more of those tones, like more of the blue slash deep blue color up into the white. We don't have enough of a variation here. Okay, uh, Dan Herrera with some Untamed Beasts. Interesting your thoughts on the color balance on the textures, bone fur skin. Sure. Okay, so the answer is more tonal variation. I mean, I could just direct you right back to that video. Like, the skin does not have enough. I need more in the shadows, more in the highlights. Even with dark skin, purples, magentas, oranges in the shadows. Use, like, a traditional Caucasian flesh to create subtle but soft highlights. Um, sort of an African skin will highlight up into that kind of a color uh, at its highest points of highlights. The bone needs more. You can watch the reference video. It's too... Like, the bone is basically just washed and then kind of there and layered back up. I need more actual transition there where the bone is deeper and has more colors to it, more transition to it throughout. Like, these big spikes and these big horns, it should be very dark here going up to very high here. Same with the metals. They're the most sort of egregiously not... Uh, I have this kind of color transition. Um, so much, much, much more on that. Lots of deeper shadows and things like that. That jumps out at me by far the most. So yeah, I mean, right now we've got good sort of base tones, but we really lack in contrast. So a lot more tonal variation. Go watch the attached video and that will help you out a great deal. Okay. Adrian, uh, first time posting here, looking for feedback on my TMM's light placement. Tried to follow Cujo's NMM theory video. Hey, uh, second time that's been referenced. Also, you say not to varnish metallics, but in a, in a model like this, what would be the most suitable? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't varnish it. I'll say that much for sure. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look. So we're dealing in some TMM here, and we've used like inks and stuff like that to shade the planes. Uh, and this is a great color. Like we can see how we can see these nice deep shadows running up into here. Uh, on the flat sides, I think we've missed an opportunity. Like, this should be a shadow up top here. Vertical planes, when placed against the light, are slightly darker on the top. Look at my hand. Like, I'm slightly holding it against the light. But see how it's darker here than it is here? Like, that's this area should be slightly darker. The only other thing than that I'd say is, I mean, an all-silver vehicle is kind of tough because it's not super visually interesting. So you might want to think about, like, light glazes of colors like a, a very weak blue or something like that could go a long way to just kind of kick some visual interest in the kind of three through five shadow area um and then edges just edge highlights to have the with this steel you want to pop out the edges so like you need to go around with silver and trace every freaking edge on this model which is a, a lengthy proposal on something like this that is just all sharp angles but every panel and every edge should be traced with like probably some kind of relatively bright-ish silver or, you know, aluminum or white metal or pale burnt metal or something like that. Um, so that's my basic feedback. But yeah, as to interpretation, I really like the wings. I really like the main uh, hull, like the cockpit. I think you, I think you executed on that well. So that that sells for me. That works. I dig that. Uh, and as to varnish, I just wouldn't varnish it. I mean, it's once the metals are done, job's good and you're you're done. That's it. Metal paints are tough. The pigment is usually, depending on what you're using, the pigment is either aluminum or mica. If it's aluminum, it's quite tough because it's it's metal. Uh, Patrick Davis. All right. Also first time posting here. Would love some general feedback and specific feedback on weathering and blending the smoke and also bait. Uh, so, sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Specific feedback on weathering and blending on the smoke and also the basing. Okay. Cool. Let's take a look. Uh, so we need to get to... So this is a great photo. We'll start here. Um, I think the wings look really good. They're very eye-catching. It's an interesting butterfly pattern. Uh, you're my butterfly. Uh, so, no, that looks good. I have no issue with that. Uh, blending on smoke. I have a video all about blending on smoke. Go watch that. I mean, it's wet blending. That's the key. Like, you just... You gotta wet blend the heck out of it, right? Uh, so... But that's my main piece of advice. Um, some of your wings, by the way, are still quite shiny, and it, I'm not sure if that's necessarily what we want to go for. You may want to mat those down a little bit, just something that catches because they'll catch weird reflections. Now, on him and his face, uh, so what did you ask about the eyes? How to make the eyes look like they're dead. Oh, like the box art has them. Uh, oh, sure. So the answer is they need to have 
dark circles around them and then be bright gray. The reason they don't look anything like anything right now is because you don't have enough depth. Like, take the pupils and irises out of my eye and I will look dead with the... I have very dark shadows around my eyes all the time. Like, I have especially deep ones because I didn't sleep well last night. So, uh, if you remove this from my eye, like the iris and the pupil, I'll look dead real fast. That's all it is. It's just gray. But the key that makes that work is not the eyeball. It's what's around it. Making this a very deep, dead purple where it's obvious like it's sunken in, that's the key to selling that effect. Okay? So that would kind of be my advice there. You can also, like, more separation of kind of the elements see previous Mortarian that I commented on, and that would also probably be a good thing here. All right, Yosef. Uh, having a little bit of a hiatus from painting yet again. I don't have any specific points to need addressing. Rather, just some general advice. Oh, sure. Okay. So let's look at our big dragon here. Um, scales look good. So my basic advice is we need to heed lighting more. So let's look at him from this. Thank you, everybody who's doing the black and white. Keep it up. More black and white photos. This is great because this will tell the exact story I want to tell. This guy is very hunched. He's like, he's in this very weird position. But yet, you've evenly distributed light all around him. Like the top of his arm here. Is the set has the same highlights on these scales as this stuff. This is just as bright as this. What we need more is more universal control of the lighting. So when you have a model like this that's very broken up with these things, the first thing you want to do is think about it like erase the texture from your mind. Just how would he be lit if that was all one smooth surface? Then go in and, and create the, the detail beneath that, right? So like the shoulder here, upper part of his leg, shoulder, and here, and this part of his arm shall be like mega bright. Whereas under part of his shoulder, under part of here, bottom part of his leg here, under part of his arm, quite dark. Right? So that's the first thing that pops out at me. Uh, on the metal, I think we're probably not as bad. Yeah, I think the metal's probably fine. There's some good variation in there. Yeah, I think that's okay. The wings seem a little flat. You know, there's a lot of texture in there, so probably just picking that out more would I think be good. I think the metal was executed well. So yeah, there's my general feedback. Hope that helps, sir. All right, Damien, first time posting, not done the base yet, looking for some general feedback and where to go to improve from here. Uh, sure, so, okay. Uh, smoothness, that's probably your basic thing. Uh, that purple is way too bright for your OSL. Way, 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 way too bright. Bring that way back down with green glazes cast light is not as strong as the light source this is the light source this is just as bright like i'm looking at this these are the exact same brightness in fact i'll prove it right this is just as white as this so that needs to tamp way down so that's number one the other thing i would recommend is just kind of smoothing it out like you can see where a lot of the blends are very rough so you know deeper shadows like we started our mid green we don't really have a five in this i need a deeper green shadow so more five more deep shadow more glazes to smooth everything out and i think that's basically where you want to go that would be my challenge for you for where to go for your next steps tattoo on the side of the head looks cool following darren there and uh, i love it that's well executed well done there great job okay uh, Pierre, first time posting, a little bit of context, trying to get contrast for it. Mostly looking for general advice on what to work on for improvement and feedback on the supposed to be black clothes. Sure. So the clothes are too flat. That's number one. Um, I just did a video on painting black. So go and watch that and that will help. But basically we need more sort of sharper highlights, more contrast going into like gray tones and stuff like that in a small volume. So a small amount of space. You have 50, 60% of the area just being black, and then you need to transition up to something that's like mid-gray, lightish gray, probably with a little bit of hue in it. Um, sorry, what was your other question? Oh, just general advice. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So that would be my main thing. Um, beyond that, I mean, he's a really simple fig. The Flame, go watch my How to Paint Fire video. Um, that little black tip doesn't work for me. Like, we need a transition there if that's what you're going to do. And then with the leather more variation in brown and more scuffing and texture to it. Leather's really fun because you can just like do little slashes and scratches and hashes and dots and stipples and all that stuff. And then you 
glaze it over with a brown and boom, you got leather. It's, it's a magical substance. It's one of the easiest things to texture. So that would be my advice there for you. But I welcome. Glad to have you along on the journey. All right. Maroc, uh, need some help refining this. Not sure where to start or how to go about it. I feel like it's a good starting point. It needs to be refined. I'm not sure if that means going back with glazes or just boost the contrast by actually adding in black or boost by adding more white or all of them. Okay, so let's let's zoom out and kind of take this piece in. So he's got this nice glowing piece and it's it's casting up to here. Um, my honest answer, Maroc, is you're in a very good place here. This is one of the better, you've been playing around a lot with like these cast lights. And this is one of the better interpretations of it. I think what we need to do is wheel back with some light glazes of like a subtle green. So you do a really nice job down here on the rock of transitioning really well. And this is the color I'm talking about, like right in here and here. But on him, it's not really present. We go right into this very bright color. Now, my perception is you're trying to capture like a light colored fur. But still, it's going to cast a dimmer light than that. Um, so I think some subtle, I don't think it needs to go brighter. I think this is all fine. I think what we need is in kind of this area, I need more of this kind of subtle green going on, especially in here, in the shadows of his face, like the shadow, the shadows that are still in light. Okay. So that's kind of, I think the refinement we need there. Now, as to the actual, you know, you can't strike a match without casting a shadow. Hard to tell, but I think you're shadowed enough. Um, I need to see it in person to really tell. Like, we're getting into the area here where it's like, OSLs are really, really tough effect to judge over just a picture alone. But I think your shadows are deep enough. Like, this really sells to me of a guy in basic darkness except for that lit from below. I think you're basically there. Really like the sword. That's looking nice. Um, but yeah, I think it's just more of this refinement color. More of this kind of area of green. Very subtly glazed in across the the guy and i think you've got a winner okay uh senior dan i'm gonna call it <laughs> dark angels apostle what can you add or remove to improve to improve the model more sure uh so our black is a little better here but again we could pop a little farther see previous comments about black uh make sure we're very careful and clean with our paint job going back and cleaning it up like the gold here is where it doesn't belong so we want to make sure that's nice and in place um the green fire i have no problem with that that's good good dusty feet um if we're going to do this texture on the cloak which is fine uh go all in uh more highlighting on the shoulder his backpack like this is still very flat i need more highlight up here on the top here here um watch the most recent video i did about uh texture like this sort of this thing you're going for on cloth you need to carry that way out i would expect to see that down here and down here and down here as well so that would be my basic thoughts for you of, of what you could do. Yeah, this guy's better. This is a better implementation of the texture because you carried it farther. I'd still go a little farther, watch the video to refine, but this is a much better take on it right here. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay. Uh, Jean, Jean, Jean Simon. We'll, call, we'll go for that. Really like the back of the miniature. It looks good from one to feet, three feet. I really despise the front of the mini, and I don't know what to do to improve it. Is the red too bright? Bad NMM and TMM, not clean enough. Color mix, contrast, highlights. What do we need? Okay. So, back of the mini looks good. Uh, I agree. And so let's look at the front of the mini. So, the answer is a couple of different things here, probably. Like, there's just a lot more. So, look at the back. The colors are much more unified and in balance, right? It's not so riotous of color. There's a single blue. It's highly desaturated because of the top of the cloak. And then there's red. Now let's look at the front. Riot of color. Blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. You know, just like all over the place. And it's all bouncing through this highly saturated color. What we need is more deeper shadows in the red. You know, tone some of this red down with a deep purple or a brown or a black or something like that. We can go to any color. Go watch my Exploring Colors red video, and you'll see kind of the different shading options. But I think that's what's throwing you off. It's so riotous in its colors, and there's so much brightness going on that it's just causing kind of a painful situation for the eye where it doesn't know where to go or where to move, and you're bouncing around too much. Higher highlights and deeper shadows. So again, up here on the chest, like I would pop this out here. 
and shadow this in here a lot more. The more we bring those shadows into the red, I think the more in line this piece will feel. So that's kind of my honest advice for you. Also, make sure we, like your pupil isn't covering the space. The eye iris and pupil isn't big enough. That needs to be a little bigger, darker line under the eye to kind of capture that. It's a small space, I understand, but that would be my basic thought there. All right, Dave, uh, painted Moloch in a sketch-based way, trying to convey texture. Any advice on how to help with that as well as color choice would be awesome. Yeah, sure. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the sketch is fine. I, honestly, I think my eye is mostly drawn to his face right now. Um, the one thing you could do to draw more attention to his face, so let's talk about lines. This is a good way to look at it. The big nose does that. Do the same color to the ends of his ears. That will really help a lot. Um, if he had a little bit of this pinky pink in the ends of his ears, that would do a big deal. Other thing you would do, take this orange-yellow transition you put on the mushrooms up top, put them down here on the mushrooms growing on his chest. Then we've got a light, then we have a singular color line that I meant to follow. One, it balances the colors better because it takes this and puts it down here. Two, that creates a uniform line of composition across the miniature. And honestly, it would zero in our attention right here. So that's kind of my main thought on what I attack. A little more pink in the ears. Um, you could pop the highlight up here a little bit or deepen the shadows around the side of his head. Again, you can either create more light or create more shadow, which will make the light seem brighter. So maybe like some soft glazes of a darker purple tone here. That would match well too with what you did for the gums. But pinky ears, um, make those earrings actually metal. Those look like they're blue. Um, make them something that's different. If you're just going for a quick sketch, then make them black or, or something like that. Uh, like give them a black glaze. That way they appear like a grayish. And then uh, these mushrooms being the same as this. And that should help a lot. All right. Thomas Spite. Uh, so... Uh, Thomas says, uh, tried to push his limit, particularly the NMM, uh, as far as it could go. My main problem is unsure if the light reflections are placed, placed correctly. What do you think? Uh, thinking of jumping soon to competition. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. So, we've talked about NMM a lot in this video. Um, I would, again, reference you to Cujo's. But for the most part, uh, the only one that doesn't strike me is this plate here the light should be on the bottom of a flat surface light bounces along the bottom and captures here i think probably here is actually the right place for the light given there's a slight curvature and then this should be a little darker and this should be quite dark um the rest of the stuff all probably sells good contrast like that's great you look at this picture look at how much that's how striking that is wonderful we're definitely capturing our contrast there um most of this looks good I don't think Cypher is a great fig for competition, honestly. He's a little busy and kind of he's kind of closed. You can't really see the miniature. Like, he's secret. So, like, everything's kind of in, and you want a miniature that's generally a little more open. A big part of him is also just a big, dirty cloth, <laughs> which, like, covering your excellent paint job in a big, dirty rag is not generally the best way to grab attention. Um, it's not you doing that. I'm just saying, like, that's the nature of Cypher, the miniature. He's He is himself covered in this big, dirty rag because he's, like, you know, He's a stealthy dude, so that's cool. It just makes him tough as a competition fig. Um, but on the whole, I mean, I think that's good. I think you're definitely pushing toward the right line. I think painting a miniature specifically for competition and going to one is the best way to get ready for competition because you will get feedback from judges and they'll hopefully understand exactly what to do. But I think you're in a good place here. The weathering on the cloaks looks good. I think mainly what I would convey to you is a little more smoothness across a couple things. Um, some of these lines, like on the shoulder, aren't as smooth as they could be. This one looks really nice. This one looks really nice. So just, you know, working, most of painting for competition is just continuing to smooth things out. Just nice, subtle, soft glazes. But your contrast looks great. Color placement's great. Paint is super clean. Um, the sword hilt's really flat. I would note, like if I was a judge, I would notice that that sword hilt's really flat immediately. Like, this should have deeper shadows in between and colors underneath and highlights on the top, like, all that kind of stuff. But overall, I think this is great, man. I think this is a really good interpretation of Cypher. I really like this. I think your non-metallics executed well. Are there a few places where the light should maybe be slightly different? Maybe. But for the most part, I think it works. I think it's mainly the smoothness. So, yeah, well done. I think it looks good, man. All right. So, next up, we've got Andrew uh, Johnston, who uh, is... 
basically, he says he's never posted before. Well, welcome. Uh, and it's about his tenth painted mini. That's wonderful. Uh, well, welcome to the welcome to the party. We're we're super glad to have you on your hobby journey. Um, <clears throat> so basically, just looking for sort of some general CNC. Um, let me say for your like you know basically second completely finished mini, and you're doing like water effects and stuff. Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, I think one of the things you want to be careful of is uh, with like the big eyes with things like this. So my, my general feedback is you're going to want to work on your brush control and smoothing out your colors. Looks like we had a dry brush as kind of a final step. So glaze after that, that way that goes back down. If you, when you're going to do eyes like this, make sure they have like actual dark separation points. They need to be very clean when you're sort of painting something on like that. It needs to, it, it feels too sort of cartoonish because we're just jumping these colors and I don't have like actual lines of separation between them. So you need to create this sort of, not only just a line, but also the shadow to it. So like an eyeball is a very complicated thing. And the ball itself has shade that's around both sides. So kind of capture that in there. Like start with a, and the way to do that, by the way, would be you started with like a, an orange or a rust color or something like that. Then you do a thinner yellow on top of that, in, in, but not covering all of your rust. And have a nice dark, like do a dark brown. Then cover everything but kind of the outside with this orange rust and then kind of yellow in the middle. That'll give you that transition and that would help a lot. So, but there you go. Welcome, man. It's a great piece for like your second painted mini. So, welcome. Hope to see a lot more from you. Tom Thorpe. Uh, welcome. Painted up this guy. Good old Chaos Warrior. Uh, and uh, first time trying loaded brush, blending on the shield. Looking for some pointers on getting it smoother. I mean, the answer is you don't stop with the loaded brush. Blending methods are just that. They're blending methods. They're not finishers. The end of most any blending road is glazing. So I think the shield's fine. I mean, the answer is more tonal variation here, right? So when we look at that, cloak, flat, right? That the, the black and white tells all. It does not, you, it doesn't lie. The helmet, flat, right? So this is good. Like this is a good first step with the, the, uh, the loaded brush. Then we go in with glazes and we smooth it out. And that's basically all you need to do. Uh, so that's my basic advice. And then create those same shadows in the rest of his armor, you know, on the sides of his helmet here and here. Pop this highlight up here um, and here under his face, like on this T-line of his, his mask face, on his kneecap, things like that. But yeah, cool model. So there you go. That would be my main advice. But I always dig me Chaos Warriors. Bring on more, buddy. All right, Dan Reese. Uh... Basically, this was his... We, so we've got our Lord of... I'm going to say Blights. Why not? Uh, entry for his local GW painting competition tomorrow. Oh, well, that's probably today as you're, as this goes up. Um, several areas I'm not happy with. Mostly the base didn't turn out as planned water effects. I'm trying to improve the overall technique and contrast. Trouble glazing light colors when pushing the contrast in the skin and armor. I also stress with metallics, especially blending dark and light as well as keeping them smooth. Um, sure. So the answer is don't glaze light colors. That's the easiest answer. Paint them rather strongly and then glaze the mid-tones and other colors down. That's the short answer. So apply your one and two and then glaze down. That's the answer. Great, great all-over shot. I like that. Yes, the base didn't turn out exactly great. Like, I agree with that. That's that's not wonderful. Um but overall on the mini itself, uh, I think your metallics, again, just more soft and subtle inks um, the, and, and work in a little more other rust colors up on here, things like his, his shoulder blade and stuff like that. The, and we do just need more contrast on the skin. And honestly, the highlight, I think, is fine. You could go with this as the high color. We just need to have more of the deeper tones, more three, but a lot more four and five sort of subtly worked in there, I think would really help. But overall, this is good. Like, it's a nice interpretation of it. The wood could use a little more texture. Um, so watch out for stuff like that. Um, and then just more smoother control with your metallics. The answer is get yourself a, say, a good set of inks, like a Vallejo Game Ink set. And then that can be your soft glaze in your metallics. Makes working with the metallics and shading them and stuff a lot easier. So that's kind of my best advice for you. Hope that helps. But this is great. And best of luck, man. I think this is a, I think this is a very strong piece. Oh, the maggots should be popped out a little more. They're kind of like a little more highlights on some of the ends of the big maggots. Phrases I hate saying for 100. Okay. Ryan McDonald, uh, only a couple months into the hobby. 
Uh, appreciate all advo advice. Uh, main points I would love input on is the gold non-metallic metal color choices, etc. Uh, all the rage this month is the non-metallic metal. So uh, let's get to this shot because that's what's going to let me talk about the NMM. Um, yeah, so I need more deeper tones on a lot of this, like his face mask and stuff like that. Um, like there's too much yellow is sort of the short answer. Non-metallic is a complicated thing. If you're planning on doing this across a whole army, I mean, God bless you. If this is just because you wanted to try one thing, cool. Yeah, no issue. Good man. Way to push yourself, and I like it. Uh, but, yeah, there's basically just too much yellow and not enough bright tone. We need, like, this has probably enough shadow, this piece right here, but this one doesn't, these don't, stuff like that, right? And then in general, you want more more red tones. Like, that's what we're really missing here, the warmth. It feels kind of dead because some soft, like, red-brown glazes or even red, like, um, Darren Latham's a big fan of the old blood letter glaze mixed with a little bit of Lamenter's yellow and then softly glazed into the metal. Um, but I need more warm brown tones. Uh, what we're missing here is something in that mid-red warm brown. Um, that's the middle color we're really lacking. And then as far as that, it looks like your edges are picked out and are nice and clean. So I don't mind any of that. Uh, on the dyno, we need to pop the tonal variation on both the dyno and the guy on top a little more. They're a little flat. See previous thing I said about scale, about like sort of scaled creatures. Like this area is just as bright as this area. It should not be. This shoulder is very exposed to the light. This is very in shadowed. Top of the tail is the same color as the bottom of the tail. Treat it as one volume and then go from there. Um, light dry brushing over the scale is a great way to do it before you then glaze that purple over. Then every edge gets picked out for free. Super easy early step to do and it's a fast, easy trick. Same for back here, same for here. So those would be my main pieces of advice for you. So hope that helps. All right, Brandon. First, it was Maw Tribes. Uh, focused mainly on the Rhinox for the Tusks. Somewhat happy with the Tusks, but I'd like to get a little more color variance. Um, for the fur, I use black leather. Uh, okay. Um, looking for any general feedback and hints on how to improve your fur game. Sure, let's take a look, man. Uh... Okay, so yes, the bone needs to go farther. Like, And with stuff like this, you can just take it way, way, way down. Like, let's go back to the black and white. Oop, sorry. Let's go back to the black and white. Like, we're just... Why does it... That's so funny. This It thinks this is a face. <laughs> the two little eyes in the mouth. Uh, it's been going a while. Um, yeah, I mean, more more contrast is the answer there. Like, that just needs to go farther. Like, more browns going into... Just go into pure black, like, almost at the very end. Um, but yeah, deep brown blacks and stuff like that. Now, I think the fur is honestly good. It's just more clumpage. So, if you go back and watch the video, you'll see I talk about, like, adjusting it. I see that and stuff, like, on his face. There's not enough... There's not enough of the dark tone in here. This is the part I like the best. The clumpage here looks nice, but we covered too much as we built up the layers. So sometimes you need to go back in and kind of build in your soft shadows to like reinstate some of the clumpage. And I think that would be the main thing I would push for you here. Um, but always glad to see a scrap launcher hit the table. Launch that scrap. But yeah, hopefully that helps. Also, don't change tones like this so fast over a break point like metal. Have the brown come up here. When this happens, it makes the pieces feel very unconnected and weird, like it's literally two separate things. Bring this brown all the way up to here. Never change drastically under a thing you can't see. So, there you go. Okay. Uh, Rednax, uh, just squeaking in the last minute with the Forest Riders. Tried out several things here. First set of eBay rescued models I worked on. This is the first time I tried to add color to my black non-metallic metal armor in a while. Most overt I've been with it. Also attempting to push color in your TM. And beyond that, I was slightly concerned about the color composition with the leader and his bird. Bird is the word. And yes, I agree. So blue, red, green. We have to stop this pox of saturated red, saturated green, saturated blue. This is like the third time it's happened this month. It doesn't work. It's not a good color combo. Um, one of those has to be desaturated, and it's probably not the parrot. Um, because, you know, like just... It would be fine 
if he also had red and greens on him and you just had like little itty bitty baby touches of slight blue and if the blue in the guy was way popped up, right? So if he was more like a macaw or something with like lots of those color transitions on him, I think it's a macaw. I don't know birds very well, but I think it's that. Like other tropical birds that have a lot of color variation who have red and green and you just had like light touches of that blue, I would be okay with it and it would work. Um, the armor, keep pushing. You're starting to push, push farther. We can we can take that up another. We need to go more notches on that. As it stands right now, let's look at the let's look at the black and white on this guy. Okay, this has more contrast than your metal armor. Cloth is reflecting brighter than somewhat shiny metal. Okay, that again, the black and white doesn't lie. Um, when it comes to the metals, by the way, they're very much too silver. Like, I need more steel color and shadow color in there, more control, and more dark lines separating the various elements. So get into that deep black and really separate those elements of the mini. Okay? Uh, the cloak, I don't... Like, you have these bright colors. I think the fur works fine. Yeah, there you go. Um, although I'm not sure why we have, like, this jump into this much lighter color here. It feels like this... Like, the, the change feels very abrupt, and I'm not sure what's going on there. It could just be the nature of the picture. Um, so, yeah, that would be my main piece of advice. Like, honestly, with the... I, I If it was me, I would kill the the green out kind of completely. Um, or, or desaturate that green way, 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 way down. If you had a bunch more black in that green, and it was just like a real subtle black green... I think we'd be better off, but then we need to bring the red down. And that's another thing. Like you don't you have the red up top. I'm not sure about the red gun, honestly. Like you're trying to balance the color, but the answer here was the bird, probably, and then this being red. And then with the the shoulder pad also red. <laughs> or or make the shoulder pad blue. And something like that. Like just the color balance is off, right? So that's kind of my main thought there. Um, it works better here where we don't have the bright blue macaw, certainly. Um, but the bright sort of pink gun is still very... Uh, it, it, the color doesn't work because it, it doesn't have enough variance in it. The red of the gun itself is very flat. It's all just this sort of pink color. Um, it would work better if it was like a rich magenta that had like a lot of tones and was desaturated because of heavy shadows and somewhat heavy highlights, right? Like, it has these depressions and runes in there, in this area. Those should be much darker. So just, like, more contrast in there. You can clearly do the contrast, because your green is spot on on that. So just kind of take that same thing and, and go in there. That's my thoughts. Okay. Uh, Shaky says he needs help with glazing and the gold. Well, you already know what you need. Um, Yeah, I mean, go. you're right. That's the main thing here. Like, tonal variation, glazing in the dark. We need darker blues, darker purples in the magenta, and deeper colors in the gold. I mean, that is the answer. You're absolutely right. It's just more tonal variation is really the answer. Um, go watch the How to Glaze video again, and that will really help you out, I think. Um, because that's really the problem. Our colors are too flat. Um, and glazing in those deeper shadows into the metallics, into the blue, into the red... That will all very much help this model pop out more. But it's really just tonal variation. Go watch the reference video. You'll see what that looks like to in, in the thing. And then you can watch how to glaze and that'll that'll get you in the right place. All right. Finally, Jenser. Uh first big miniature. Uh tried out a lot of new techniques on this one. Uh I'd like to have some feedback on color choice, contrast improvement, and execution of the paint job. Sure. Okay. So color theory wise, I think you're fine. I don't I don't have any problem with any of the color theory. Bones have a good striation, although I need some darker dark down here at the bottom. So, like, I like the cream to the brown, but it's very... That's it. It's like those two colors like this. It'd be great if I had a darker, deeper black brown here at the base of it. Um, the scales are picked out. We could pick out farther, and I'd love to see more variation of your light to shadow. So, more, like, apply some more washes to get some color down here, some more shadow here, some more shadow here... Pop this up a little higher, this up a little higher. By the way, this can all be done with just like soft glaze kind of washes and or glazes or glaze washes. Like it's the kind of you can you can this guy is just about going back and forth. Like when I painted my mall crusher, it was just colors back and forth and over and over. And I just kept 
pulling, pulling, pulling the colors apart and then bringing them back together and pulling them apart and bringing them back together until I was really happy with the stretch. Um, the wings need to be cleaned. That's a big major thing. Like these were washed and just kind of like left and they look messy. We need to get back to our paintbrush and get some of this stuff cleaned up a little here. That's the part that really jumps out at me. Um, other than that, it's just tonal variation across the skin. So deepen down some of those shadows. Let's bring in some more of those shadow colors. Um, you know, get, get yourself like a Payne's gray would be a great shadow color here and just really bring that in. Also be careful with stuff like this, like this giant mold line this guy has, um, you know, that you want to make sure you try to get that stuff cleaned up. But I mean, the black and white doesn't lie as always. You can see what I'm talking about that. He's all kind of this flat gray across his skin. We need deeper shadows and higher highlights, more contrast, more tonal variation. So there you go. That brings us to the end of the month. So uh, thank you very much, everybody who submitted. Uh, very much appreciated. Great work this month, everyone. Absolutely fantastic pieces. Um, if you want to join us on your hobby journey, link is down in the description. Check that out. We'd love to have you along no matter where you are. But as always, I very much appreciate you for submitting. Thank you to everybody who's in the comments, answering other people's questions in the PMP. This is a positive hobby-focused community, and that's done not through me. It's done through all of you. So when you see somebody post something you think is awesome, give them a comment, give them a like, tell them how, why you think it's awesome. If somebody has a question and you know the answer, pop up that answer for them, right? Like that's the kind of stuff that can make someone's day, that can help someone out. That's what this community is built on. So please keep that up. And as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one. I appreciate everybody submitting. Thank you to everybody in the PMP. We'll see you next time.